I was house cleaning my photo album the other day, a once every 20 year project, and found photos that I thought would be of interest to the guys I used to work with in the towers. I then realized these photos might also be of interest to other aviation enthusiasts and decided to put together the slideshow video on YouTube. I found photos collecting dust that I took over a 30 year period of five air traffic control towers at the Calgary International Airport. I also took a photo of the ATC tower that was at Lincoln Park RCF military base, as well as photos of the old and new Springbank Airport towers, and also the two towers at Whitehorse. Calgary has had five towers in use since the first one was built in 1939. They were all relocated to various areas of the airport, and with each new tower built, more modern and updated equipment was installed. One of the items on my bucket list was to have visited all the towers in Calgary. By the way, to extend the view time of a particular slide, click pause. Calgary Tower No. 1, 1939-1956 to 1956, was located on top of the first of four hangars built on the southeast corner of the Calgary Airport. My visit to Calgary Tower No. 1, age 19, was in early 1956 while on my solo cross country from Edmonton to Calgary, then return during my training for my CPL. After landing on runway 20, the tower requested I park in the grass under the tower for refueling and then come up to the tower to refile my flight plan. I had a nice visit with the controllers. Calgary Tower number 2, 1956 to 1968, was located on the fourth floor of the terminal building number 2 at the southwest corner of the airport. This tower had two control positions, air control and ground control. There was no radar in the tower back then, so for distance viewing, it was common to use binoculars. The terminal control unit was located one floor below the tower. Radar was being introduced across Canada in the IFR units only, and came into service in Calgary Terminal Control Unit early 1960s. I started in ATC in 1958, was transferred and started controlling in Calgary Tower No. 2 in March 1959. During my time in this tower, ATC paid controllers a starving clerical salary. In 1959, it was $7 per hour. I couldn't raise a family on that, so I took a part-time flying job, which paid $10 per hour. Hail suppression started in 1961 to 1968, using salvaged AT-6 Harvards purchased from the RCAF. Because they were short pilots and couldn't find anyone stupid enough to fly these dilapidated aircraft and close to thunderstorms, they paid $30 per hour. I needed the money, so I flew them for seven years we had them. Since the formation of CATCA, ATC salaries have improved. I was visiting Calgary recently and heard that during the demolition of the terminal building on Tower No. 2, someone had the foresight to remove and save the old tower cap. It was mounted on a new structure at the Calgary airport and open for pre-arranged tours. Rather than the tour, I received permission to enter after hours. Reaching the top of the stairs, I stopped and scanned the horizon through the now dirty windows. Many memories went through my mind from over a half century ago since I worked in this tower cab. Some memories were good, others were of the many incidences, accidents, and fatal crashes that occurred during my shift. Now satisfied with the new life that the old tower was granted, I descended the stairs with another memory of tower number two. Calgary Tower number three, 1968 to 1992 was built at midfield west of the intersection of taxiways Uniform and Alpha. This tower had radar installed and the latest in technology for that era. The interior was modern with four control positions, air control, ground control, coordinator, and clearance delivery. Also two non-op positions, flight data, and the supervisor's position. Unknown to me at the time, someone took this picture of yours truly about 1969 and was kind enough to give me the negative. The terminal control unit was located on the ground floor and had control positions for arrival and departure. A coordinator was available to sit behind to monitor and assist when required. Calgary Tower Number 4, 1992-2013 to 2013. After 27 years, I retired in 1985, so I didn't get a chance to work in this tower. However, when invited, I did visit the unit a couple times. On my tour, I do remember it as a maze weaving my way through the building corridors and many floors ascending to the tower. Calgary Tower number 5, 2013 to present date. The new tower stands 270 feet and is the tallest standing ATC tower in Canada. 
to think that in the 60 years since I started controlling, technology has gone from a wind direction indicator, wind speed indicator, barometer or altimeter setting indicator, couple pairs of binoculars, a light gun, few radio frequencies, and a flare gun, to this maze of technology that I couldn't even pronounce. I had a great tour in 2017. By searching the web, there are interior photos of this tower. This completes the five permanent ATC towers of Calgary. Now for Calgary Mobile Towers. Calgary's Mobile Tower number one, mid-1960s. Fifty years ago, Calgary's runway 1634 was extended to 12,675 feet. The two miles made it difficult to judge the distance between light aircraft on final for runway 16. So for the summer, a mobile trailer with a tower cab was parked midway down 1634. One controller in the trailer cab was traffic advisory to the controller in the tower controlling the aircraft. We nicknamed the mobile tower number two and a half. It proved inefficient, so tower number three was built. There's no photo available, so I photoshopped this sample. Mobile tower number two, 1960s. ATC provided a mobile tower service to the local community airports for their annual fly-ins. This unit was manned by two ATC controllers, usually one from Calgary and one from Edmonton. Very few light aircraft had radios back then. Control at fly-ins was either by a light gun or a flare pistol. This particular day, Dick fired a flare to two arriving aircraft. The live flare landed under a parked fabric aircraft and set the grass on fire. I've never seen so many pilots doing the stomp trying to save the other aircraft parked beside it. After this incident, flare pistols were put into storage never to be seen again. Financial cutbacks curtailed the mobile. Before we leave Calgary International Airport, let's take a look at three different terminal buildings. Terminal building number one tower. This tower was never used as an air traffic control tower. I flew out of this hangar during the 1960s and the tower was used for storage of documents and aircraft parts. Terminal building number two tower was used as an air traffic control tower. Terminal building number three tower was not used as an air traffic control tower. I was in this tower for a day shift to monitor air traffic in the mid-1960s. During that time, it was used for storage, occasionally offices. We leave Calgary International Airport to visit. Lincoln Park, Royal Canadian Air Force Military Airport Tower, 1935 to mid-1960s. In 2016, I took a tour of the Calgary Air Museum, admiring the aircraft on display outside at the far corner of the grounds. I spotted something familiar in the distance. A closer look revealed the control tower from Lincoln Park Airport that I had visited in the early 1960s. The Lincoln Park controller called us on the hotline at Calgary Tower No. 2 and invited us over after shift change. Lincoln Park Airport was decommissioned in the mid-1960s and the tower now restored lives at the Calgary Air Museum. Springbank Tower No. 1, 1969-2001 Four of us were getting off day shift at Calgary Tower, and because it was Springbank Airport's grand opening day, one of the controllers suggested we fly over and attend. A Cessna 172 was available, so four of us flew over to Springbank. After landing, the tower told us to come up to the tower. As we were the first official landing at Springbank grand opening, the controller requested we sign the tower logbook. The Springbank Unit Chief recently emailed me a copy of the logbook page that we signed 49 years ago. Springbank Tower Number 2, 2001 to current date. During last year's visit to Calgary, I had one more tower to complete my list of having been in all towers in the Calgary area. I enjoyed my visit to Springbank Tower Number 2. Not much of a bucket list, but it meant something personal to me. Whitehorse Tower No. 1, World War II era to 1971. I was transferred to Whitehorse Tower January 1970. On my first day tour, I was shown the tower cab, then my office a couple floors below. I noticed a shovel in the corner. Three days later, I came to work in a snowstorm and discovered the purpose for the shovel. The enormous cracks in the walls of this ancient structure allowed snow to drift in. It was about a foot deep and had drifted about six feet across the office floor. There was no heat other than in the tower cab. So rather than leave the snow there until spring, I opened the window and threw the snow out to the ground 40 feet below, which was repeated for the rest of the winter. Whitehorse Tower Number 2, 1972 to current date. Tower Number 1 was declared a fire hazard and ordered decommissioned. 
Tire number two was constructed immediately. The chosen exterior colors were questionable. It must have been a local paint sale. But this was ignored in appreciation for our new modern work environment. The lower floor was radio technicians. The main floor was flight service, telecommunications area manager, and the weather office. Of that was all ATC. White Horse Tower number two repainted. A pilot friend that once resided and flew out of the Yukon returned last year to attend a White Horse aviation reunion. He flew his aircraft from Edmonton to White Horse return. I had plans but was unable to attend. He knew I wanted to go and take a tour of the White Horse Tower number two, since I hadn't worked there for 43 years. He parked his aircraft in the foreground and took a photo with the tower number two in the background. First thing I noticed was the different color paint job on the tower. I hope you have enjoyed this as much as I have in making it.